wikihow 69 https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash overcome dash the dash fear dash of dash driving dash for dash the dash first dash time https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash become dash a dash trustworthy dash person https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash stay dash motivated dash in dash school https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash get dash sexy dash curves dash left parenthesis for dash teenage dash girls https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash a dash normal dash teenager https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash make dash one zero zero dash dollars dash in dash a dash week dash left parenthesis teens how to overcome the fear of driving for the first time Download article Methods 1. Gaining knowledge about driving 2. Adjusting things in the car 3. Reducing your anxiety Other sections Expert Q&A Related articles References Article summary Co-authored by Simon Mirath Last updated the 29th of January 2024 approved being afraid of driving for the first time is not unusual but there are things you can do to feel more confident prepare yourself by learning how to take care of things that might come up on the road and by learning more about the car you will be driving adjust Car settings before driving and make sure there are no distractions. Relax yourself by having a supportive friend ride in the car with you and drive during the day to make sure you have the best visibility. Method 1. Gaining knowledge about driving. Download article 1. Learn driving related tasks. Before you drive for the first time, make sure you learn all the driving-related tasks that might come up when you are behind the wheel. Being prepared for these possibilities will reduce some of the worry and uncertainty about driving. These tasks should include 1. Pumping gas Changing a tire Jump-starting a car Adding windshield washer fluid. 2. Learn about your car. Before you drive, learn as much as you can about the vehicle you will be driving so you can feel in control. Read the car manual to learn about the car's features, where things are located, and how things can be operated. Sit in the driver's seat and find all the basic controls such as the lights, blinker, horn, and pedals. 2. 3. Ask friends and family for stories and advice. To reduce your anxiety about driving. For the first time, ask your friends and family to tell you about the first time they drove. Ask them if they felt nervous about the experience, and how they dealt with it. Request. Advice for how to best handle your first time driving. 4. Plan out your route. To save yourself undue stress while you are driving, plan out a route before getting behind the wheel. 3. Choose areas that you are comfortable with. And know very well. Aim for streets that have minimal traffic so that you can drive carefully without dealing with impatient drivers. 4. Method 2. Adjusting things in the car. Download article. 1. Position your seat. Before you drive, take the time to adjust the driver's seat to make sure that your feet reach the pedals comfortably. 
5. Sit up straight and make sure that you have one heel on the floor and the ball of your other foot pressing against the pedals. Be sure that you feel comfortable with the positioning of the seat to ensure that you drive confidently. Make sure that your knees are not excessively bent when you are sitting up straight, which can affect your ability to properly operate the foot pedals while driving. 2. Adjust the rear view mirrors. It is crucial that you adjust your rear view mirrors before driving. Look at the center mirror and adjust it so that you can see the entire rear view window from the driver's seat. Adjust each side mirror so that you can just barely see the car when you lean in the mirror's direction. Check the settings of your mirrors before driving by sitting in your parked car and observing how passing cars appear in your mirrors. 3. Remove distractions. Turn off your phone or put it on silent to avoid having calls, texts, or alerts startle you. Avoid driving with anyone who might distract or upset you. Leave your radio or iPod off to keep a clear head on the road. 6. 4. Set the temperature. Adjust the temperature settings in the car before you start driving. If the heat or air conditioning run too high while you drive, they may take your focus away from the road. Avoid playing with climate settings while you drive to avoid a possible accident. 7. Method. 3. Reducing your anxiety. Download article. 1. Take long, relaxing breaths. To relax yourself and gain more focus before driving, take a moment to do a breathing exercise. Take a deep, slow breath in and hold it for four counts, then slowly release the air through your mouth. Repeat the exercise four times until you are feeling calmer. 8. 2. Have a close friend or family member in the car with you. To alleviate some anxiety, choose someone trustworthy to be your passenger when you drive for the first time. Ask a close friend or family member who is a good driver to ride with you so that they can guide you through the experience. Avoid choosing anyone who causes you stress or gets impatient, which can make the experience difficult. 9. 3. Avoid driving at night. Driving at night can be difficult because of reduced visibility. Avoid nighttime driving when you first get behind the wheel and opt to drive during the day instead, when people, signs, and other cars are clearly visible. Wait until you are more comfortable driving to do so when it is dark outside. 10. 4. Drive during non-peak times. To reduce stress, choose to drive during a time of the day and week when there is minimal traffic. Opt to drive in the middle of the week rather than on the weekend, when there are many more cars on the road and a higher risk of accidents. If possible, drive midweek during the day, when there is a lower risk of accidents. 11. Expert Q&A Question What can I do to stay calm while I'm driving? Simon Mirath Driving Instructor Expert Answer Try to take it slow at first and practice somewhere that isn't super busy. Play Relaxing music and plan your route ahead of time so don't have to stress about it. Not helpful 0 helpful 6 Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to become a trustworthy person. Download article. Parts. 1. Being a positive force. 2. Ridding yourself of negative behaviors. 
3. Staying trustworthy. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Reviewed by Seth Hall. Last updated, the 17th of August, 2023. Fact checked. Being trustworthy is admirable and desirable. It's a tray other people look for in a person and it's confirmation that you're reliable, supportive and honest. If you'd like to become more trustworthy and have others come to rely on you, there are some great ways to go about doing this. Part 1. Being a positive force. Download article. 1. Be of good character. Have more than good intentions in life. While it's nice to mean. Well, it's far better to show people that you're a person who is reliable, tries their best at. All times and thinks clearly. Meaning well can end in all sorts of problems, including. Excusing oneself for failure to follow through. On the other hand, good character lets. Other people know that you have traits they can always rely upon. Actions prove far more than words. Good character is forged in good, caring and thoughtful actions. 2. Be reliable and keep your word. When you say that you will do something for someone, then do it. People rely on a promise and seeing it through is the hallmark of a trustworthy person. 1. Hand things in on time. Be where you say you will be punctually. Arrive when you say you will. Depart when you said you would. 2. Don't break your promise. If you have problems keeping it, talk to the person about the circumstances but with a view to fulfilling what you can of the promise. Don't simply fail to do it or slink away if it's not doable. 3. Be honest. Be honest in everything you do. Honesty is the keystone to people knowing where they stand with you. Honesty includes having good manners though, when being frank, at least be polite. Sometimes it is necessary to sugarcoat the truth so that it's bitter. Pill is swallowed with greater ease. 3. Some honesty can be hard but is still essential. For example, your least favorite co-worker has spinach stuck in his teeth after a work function. Do you tell him? Of course you do. He deserves to know that. Your arch enemy has her skirt tucked into her knickers after visiting the bathroom. Do you tell her? Of course you do. She deserves to know that. You may have qualms because you initially think it's funny, payback or just desserts but realize that by being honest here, you gain respect from people who would otherwise be thorns in your side. They owe you one and know you are someone solid. Even in hard situations always tell the truth. 4. Be compassionate kind and considerate. These traits feed into trustworthiness. Because they let people know that you give people the time of day and that you're willing to give second chances. Compassion must be felt from within and learn it through. Experience by standing in other people's shoes, seeing things from their perspective. Practice looking at things from the other person's perspective until it feels second nature. When you are able to think of the other person first, because you're already internally strong and well self-nurtured, then you will be viewed as trustworthy. 4. 5. Keep confidences and secrets. People tell you things in confidence because they trust you. That is a bond to never be broken. You must guard these confidences closely unless and until the person who bestowed you with that confidence says that you can do otherwise. 
5. 6. Make good friends. Avoid befriending the gossiping types other than to say hello to them as you pass by. Instead, find people of good character, who are also aiming to be trustworthy, caring and strong, just like you. Support each other and help each other to continue growing as good human beings throughout life. Quality over quantity applies to friendships as much as anything else in life. While being friendly to all is a great trait, having quality friends who are close to you will often mean the group is much smaller. Part 2. Ridding yourself of negative behaviors. Download article. 1. Don't deceive people, don't lie. There will be times when deception and lying seem like the right way out of something. Yet, the truth will eventually come out and it is better to take control of bad actions, bad news and bad happenings before your deception or untruthful statements unravel. Be the better and bigger person and tell the truth and avoid the temptation to cover things up. 6. The truth always comes out, one way or another. Remind yourself of this. Mark Twain once said, if you tell the truth you don't have to remember anything. This makes for a simpler, happier and more fulfilling life. 2. Avoid gossip, rumor mongering or innuendo. None of these things read trustworthy. They're the total opposite. Avoid getting involved in gossip, avoid starting rumors and don't succumb to making insidious suggestions about people. Speak plainly, rely on facts. And point out the reality to others when they lack the facts but mouth off anyway. 7. Move away from the gossip clan. Gossiping clans make sure you take turns to dish out garbage about those not in the gossip clan. Once it's your turn, you'd probably hurt someone's feelings while you tell them everything. Remember that the truth will always find a way out, so don't even start with the nasties. If all else fails, just think about how that person you are talking about would feel and just tell your friends you've got nothing. 3. Apologize when it is needed. Tell people you may have heard that you're sorry for making a mistake, for getting them wrong or for being totally out of order. You may like to explain the reason you did something, but that depends on the situation. Sometimes, it's just best to say sorry and to own your mistake. Then, do your best to make it up to the other person. Tell them that you are doing your level best to be a better, more trustworthy person now and that you don't follow any of the old ways that involved hurting people. 8. 4. Maintain the long-term relationship in place of the short-term gain. Cheating on. Lying to or sneaking around someone you care about because you're focused on an initial current thrill will end in pain. If things aren't going well in any relationship, communication is key, not subterfuge and cheating. Talk openly to try to find solutions to the blockages in your relationship. Clarity and a willingness to solve problems are the signs of a trustworthy person. Part 3. Staying Trustworthy Download article. 1. Realize that being trustworthy is a journey, not an end point. It takes time to change. Bad habits, a poor attitude and bad ways of reacting to others. Earning trust takes time. 2. Especially if you have been a difficult human being in the past. Yet, it will happen. Especially as you continue to prove through your actions that you are reliable, honest, and of good character. 2. 
remind yourself at all times that being trustworthy is a valuable asset to your life and to the lives of the people you care about. When people you care about know they can rely on your word and that you are honorable and honest, you will be given important tasks, you will become the keeper of great confidences and you will be respected. These are worthwhile outcomes to aim for. 9. 3. Be strong. It is important to remember that life isn't a popularity contest. Sometimes, people won't appreciate your honesty, your strength against unkindness and your unwillingness to gossip or spread rumors. That's just a fact you must live with. Understanding that all people have to come to their own realizations about holding better values in life. 4. Believe in yourself and validate the good in you, at all times. You do best in life when you begin from strong foundations. Trust yourself and love yourself so that you can relay that inner trust and love to others, trusting and loving them with strength and goodwill. Grow yourself, then you can grow others. Knowing that you do not need others to save you or shape you will aid you in being trustworthy because you don't need to stroke their egos just to feel good. It will also help you when you are occasionally betrayed by someone you trusted, it happens, because you've the capacity, will and resilience to carry on regardless. All courage and strength to you. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Become trustworthy around everyone, not just your nearest and dearest. Being trusted is even more of a compliment than being loved. Loyalty to those not present proves your loyalty to those who are present. Hanging out with good role model friends inspires you to be a good human. Show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to stay motivated in school. Download article. Parts. 1. Setting yourself up for success. 2. Working toward your goals. 3. Practicing focus and concentration. Plus show two more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References Article Summary Co-authored by Sean Alexander, M.S. Last updated, the 4th of April, 2024 approved. Do you have those days where you say to yourself, I don't need school or those days? When you just don't feel like rolling out of bed. You're not alone, but doing well in. School will set you up to have the life you want down the road. There are many things you can do to keep yourself motivated in school. Part 1. Setting yourself up for success. Download article. 1. Create a good studying environment. If you're working in a hectic area, then you might hate the time you spend working. Make sure your study space is set up to help you. Enjoy your study time as well as you can. Keep your desk neat and clean so you don't get frustrated by how sloppy it is. Keep your tools, pencils, highlighters, staplers, neatly organized so you can find them easily. Make sure the space is well lit. Dim lighting can give you a headache which definitely won't help you stay motivated. Figure out if you work best with silence or with a little background. Noise Some people are distracted by noise, while others can't work. Without a little music playing in the background. 2. Start a study group When you study with friends, it doesn't feel so painful. But you have to make sure you stay on task instead of joking around and having a good time. 
study groups should have no more than three to four members so they don't get unruly. Meet at least once a week on a regular schedule. You can meet at school. During a free period, or after school at somebody's house. Volunteer to be the group leader forward slash coordinator. You will determine what classes and projects the group will focus on in a given week so that everyone's working together and helping each other instead of randomly working on their projects. Prepare for each session. Don't just show up and expect to do work in your study group. Come prepared with insight on the task you've been working on all week. Remember to give the group short breaks from time to time to relax and recharge. 3. Schedule your study time. If you don't set yourself up to do well in school, you'll hate facing it every day. So you must try hard by creating a regular schedule for after school. And the weekends, you'll bring up your grades, improve your self-confidence, and appreciate school more. 1. Set a patterned routine. Successful people often stick to regular routines to help them stay on task and achieve their goals. 2. There might be some variation throughout the week, for example, you might have a club or practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but not the other days. Make sure that every week, you know what to expect from each day. Give yourself a break from time to time. Studies have shown that taking a break to recharge when you feel like you're going to burn out help. Improve your productivity. 3. 4. Maintain a calendar. School won't seem so overwhelming if you stay on top of all of your obligations. Buy a daily planner to help keep track of the schedule you created in the previous step. Write down all your homework in this calendar, as well as due dates for long-term assignments and projects. Remember to write reminders about long-term projects in the days. Leading up to the due date, so you don't forget about it until the last. Second. You can also use a calendar app on your cell phone to keep track of your obligations. Most apps can be programmed to remind you of deadlines. Part. 2. Working toward your goals. Download article. 1. Break large tasks into smaller ones. 4. Don't get overwhelmed by a class presentation or a long paper. Remember that you don't have to finish a project in one sitting. List all the different steps you must complete to finish the project. Make a schedule that forces you to finish one small piece of the project per day. For a paper, you might read and summarize one source on day one another source on day two, a third source on day three, synthesize their arguments on day four, outline your argument on day five, integrate quotations from your sources into your outline on day six, write your paper on days seven and eight, rest on day nine, and revise on day ten. 2. Reward yourself. If you want to stay motivated in school, you need something to look forward to. Bargain with yourself, if you study for two hours, you can watch your favorite TV show at 8 o'clock. If you get an A on your paper, you'll take the whole weekend off and just relax. Remember that nobody can work all the time. Give yourself a little time off when you deserve it. If you don't meet your goals, keep yourself to your promise. If you goof off on social media for half of the two hours you were supposed to be studying, don't let yourself watch your favorite TV show. 3. Create consequences for yourself. 
If you don't achieve the work goals you set for yourself, give yourself a punishment. You'll work harder during the week if slacking off means you can't go to the movies with your friends over the weekend. 4. Be vocal about your goals. Spread the news, you're setting a high bar for yourself. Tell your friends, your parents, tell everyone you know that you plan on bringing your English grade up to AB by the end of the semester, or that you're going to ace the chemistry test. By telling others about your goals, you will work harder to avoid the embarrassment of failing to meet those goals. If you work your best and still fail to meet those goals, don't be discouraged. Redouble your efforts. With hard work and time, you'll meet your goals. Part 3. Practicing Focus and Concentration Download article 1. Practice meditation. Meditation will clear your mind of the distractions that might keep you from focusing on your studies. Before you sit down to study, set aside 15 minutes to meditate. This will help you get in the right state of mind for working toward your goals without distractions. Find a quiet environment. Sit cross-legged on the ground in a comfortable position, supporting your back against a wall if you need to. Close your eyes and focus on the darkness. Think about nothing but the darkness that you see. Don't let yourself think about anything else. When 15 minutes have passed, get to work. 2. Summarize interesting readings and videos. 5. Even if you don't like to read for homework, you probably read every day. You read interesting articles online and watch interesting videos online and on TV. Summary is one of the most useful skills you can have, and it's the foundational building block of everything you do in school. Bye. Practicing this skill on stories and information you find personally interesting, you are honing an important academic skill while thinking about something you enjoy. 3. Practice mindfulness tricks. 6. Whether you're in class or sitting at your desk at home, you might find yourself nodding off or getting lost in a daydream because you're bored. A good way to bring your mind back into focus is to practice mindfulness tricks. Create a simple but distinct action that sends a clear message to yourself. It should be something you don't do regularly, wiggling your toes, for example. Every time you feel your mind drifting away, wiggle your toes to snap yourself back into focus. 4. Count backwards from 100. 7. If you feel like your mind is scattered and you can't focus on your goal, give yourself a task that you know you can accomplish that will take up a couple of minutes and that is just difficult enough to require concentration, but not difficult enough to frustrate you. Counting backward from 100 will help calm you down and focus your mind. 5. Raise your heart rate. Studies have shown that exercising for as little as 10 minutes before tackling a task can improve performance by increasing the flow of blood to the brain. 8. The effects can last up to a few hours, so there's a big payoff for a little bit of exercise. Try jumping rope, doing jumping jacks, running in place, or any other. Simple activity you can do easily in your room. Part 4. Making lifestyle changes to stay motivated. Download article. 1. Get 8 to 10 hours of sleep every night. Studies have shown that teenagers' bodies don't function well early in the morning, so many middle and high schoolers have trouble 
focusing in school because they are sleepy. 9. A large part of why many students don't like school is that they are tired. Teenagers' bodies naturally want to stay up late and sleep in late, but you need to train your body to your school schedule. Make yourself get in bed at a reasonable hour, even if you're not tired. Yet. Don't watch TV or use your computer for at least an hour before you go. To bed. 10. Don't take naps during the day, so you'll be more tired at night. 2. Eat a healthy diet. It might not be immediately obvious how your diet relates to your performance in school, but it's very important. A poorly balanced diet might fill you up, but it won't necessarily give you the energy you need to stay focused and productive, and you won't be motivated if you're tired. Remember to always eat breakfast to help power up your body first thing in the morning. Fish with omega-3 and whole grains improve memory function. Dark fruits and vegetables provide antioxidants that improve memory and cognition. 11. Foods rich in vitamin B, including spinach, broccoli, and beans, are good for memory and alertness. 3. Get enough exercise. Many studies have demonstrated a link between exercise and improved productivity, so stay active. 12. Regular exercise will not only help you focus when you're studying, but it also improves your mood. 13. Being focused and in a good mood are very important to staying motivated for school. Part 5. Learning to Value School Download Article 1. Imagine the life you want as an adult. School may be boring on a day-to-day -day basis, and some of your classes might feel unimportant right now, but remember that without school, you won't be able to live the life you want as an adult. Studies have shown that young people working toward clear goals have higher achievements and life satisfaction. 14. Write a list of the things you'd like to be able to provide for yourself as an adult. Some examples of things you want as an adult might include Traveling the world Supporting a family Driving a good car Buying season tickets for your favorite sports team Having extra money to see concerts, eat out in fancy restaurants, see plays etc. 2. Consider the skills you'll need in your dream job. You want to love the job you have when you grow up, so take your time in school to prepare the skills you'll need to get that job. Make a list of all the jobs you can see yourself being happy in. For each job, list the skills you'll need to do that job well. Match up those skills with the classes and clubs at school that will prepare you for your dream job. Work extra hard in those classes. Join those clubs. Know that working hard in school will ensure a fulfilling career later in life. 3. Take advantage of social opportunities. This doesn't mean that you should be Talking through class or passing notes, but it does mean to make school more enjoyable by embracing your classmates. Don't have a bad, grumpy attitude just because you're in school. Enjoy your classmates' company, and you might even find yourself looking forward to school. Make good use of your downtime at school. Lunchtime and the Time between classes is a great time to recharge your energy before your next class by having a good laugh with a friend. Join after-school clubs and teams to find people who share your interests. Supercharge your studying with this expert series. 
Do you want to make your studying more efficient, learn more quickly, and remember more? Information Check out these expert articles. 1. Study for exams. 2. Study so you can remember everything. 3. Make a study space. 4. Create good study habits for exams. 5. Learn without forgetting. 6. Retain information when you study. Expert Q&A Question What can I do to stay occupied in school? Laura Reber, SSP School Psychologist Expert Answer One easy solution is to ask your teacher if you can stand up for a little bit. Sitting for an extended period of time can be difficult if you have ADHD, so standing may be a bit easier for you. Your teacher shouldn't have a problem with it if you aren't bothering anyone. Another option is to get a fidget toy and play with it under your desk. Not helpful 0 helpful 3. Question. How do I enjoy studying? Sean Alexander. MS. Academic Tutor. Expert Answer. Think about what you are passionate about. Aside from your classes, what do you love? Let's say you love history but don't like math. In terms of history, where do you think humans would be if they never figured out math? Try to see how your classes are relevant to what you find interesting. Not helpful 3 helpful 9. Question. Is it better to study the night before or the morning of school? Community answer. It's better to study the night before, as it will help you sleep better if your brain knows that it has already tackled all that it needs to do. Just go back through your notes really quickly in the morning before the test. Not helpful 6 helpful 50. How to get sexy curves, for teenage girls. Methods. 1. Getting fit to look curvier. 2. Dressing to flatter your curves. 3. Posing to flaunt your curves. Other sections. Questions and answers. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Layla Ajani. Last updated, the 20th of January, 2024. Having sexy curves can help you to feel more confident, especially when you want to get someone's attention. There are some ways to build curves, such as by strength training. You can also accentuate the curves you already have by choosing the right clothes. If you're trying to look curvier for a photo or when someone is looking at you, there are simple ways to angle your body for a curvier appearance. Method 1. Getting fit to look curvier. Download article 1. Squat and lunge to build muscle in your butt and legs. Squats and lunges are classic. Moves to work your buttocks and legs all at once. 1. Incorporate 3 sets of 15 to 20 squats and lunges, on each leg, into twice weekly strength training sessions. Other good exercises for your legs and butt include, 2. Bridge. Lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet and hands flat on the floor beside your buttocks. Lift your hips up until your knees are in a straight line with your shoulders. Hold for 30 to 60 seconds. 3. Leg lifts. Get down on all fours, straighten out one leg behind you, and lift it into the air. Keep your leg straight as you do this. Repeat 15 to 20 times and then switch to the other leg. Do three sets during each of your Twice weekly strength training sessions. Jumping squats. 
squat down and then explode upwards into a jump. Repeat this 15 to 20 times and do 3 sets in each of your strength. Training Sessions 2. Include AB exercises to cinch your waistline. Tightening up your abs will make your waist smaller and enhance the curves around your hips by comparison. 4. Try doing 3 sets of 15 to 20 crunches in your twice weekly strength training sessions and plank for 30 to 60 seconds three times per session other ab exercises you might try include v sits sit on the ground with your legs out straight in front of you then lean back slightly and bring your feet off the ground balance on your buttocks with your feet in the air and your legs forming the shape of a V. Reach your right hand towards your left foot, and then your left hand towards your right foot. Repeat for 30 to 60 seconds three times during each of your twice weekly workouts. Side plank. Keep your body straight and support yourself with one arm and one leg. Place your right palm against the ground and the side of your right foot against the ground. Hold the position for 30 to 60 seconds. And then switch to the other side. Planks with leg lifts. Try lifting up one leg in the air while you are in a plank position. This will make the move more challenging by shifting all of the weight to one foot. Hold for 30 to 60 seconds and then switch to the other foot. 3. Build your upper body to accentuate an hourglass figure. If you have narrow shoulders, bulking them up a bit will make your waistline more noticeable. You can achieve this by working your shoulders and chest. Repeat each exercise 10 to 12 times and do three sets in each of your twice weekly workouts. Start with 10 pound, 4.5 kilograms, or lighter. Weights and increase the weight as you gain strength. Some good exercises for strengthening your shoulders and chest include, 5. Alternating dumbbell presses. Lie on your back on a bench with one dumbbell in each hand. Start with the dumbbells next to your chest and lift the dumbbells up over your chest one at a time. 6. Lateral arm raises. Hold a dumbbell in each hand while standing with your feet shoulder width apart. Start with the dumbbells at your sides. And then raise the dumbbells up with your arms straight until they are parallel to your shoulders. Push-ups. Get down on your hands and knees and then straighten out your legs and tuck your toes under to support your body. Position your hands on the ground directly below your shoulders. Use your arms to lower yourself down until you are almost touching the ground. Then, use your arms to push yourself back up. 4. Gain weight slowly if you're underweight. Curves are made up of a combination of muscle and fat, so eat a healthy diet to ensure that your body has time to increase both equally. It's not good for you to gain or lose too much weight at once, though, so make small adjustments to add calories into your diet. You may be able to gain as much as a pound of weight a week safely, but not everyone can or should. Talk to your doctor before you start a comprehensive weight gain program. 7. Eat a full meal after you work out. Your body needs carbohydrates and protein to build muscle. Eat calorie-dense snacks, like nuts, hummus, and full-fat yogurt. Enjoy junk food, candy, and soda in moderation. They shouldn't make up the majority of your calories. Incorporate protein into your diet to help stay fit and get an hourglass. 
Figure. 8. Method. 2. Dressing to flatter your curves. Download article. 1. Wear items that fit you well and hug your natural curves. If you drown your figure in thick fabrics that stand away from your body, you won't show your curves. However, if you wear form-fitting clothing, you can make the most of what you have. Wear clothes that follow your natural curves, but that don't fit too tightly. 9. For example, you can wear a body contour dress, a fitted jacket, or a stretchy top to help show off your curves. Avoid wearing items that are loose or baggy as these will make your figure seem boxy or square-shaped. Clothing that drapes across your figure at an angle can also help to emphasize your curves. Try clothing that falls in horizontal folds at your neckline or across your hips. 2. Opt for clothing that uses color blocking to accentuate your curves. Color blocked. Tops and dresses accentuate your curves with one color or pattern on the top half and a different pattern or color on the bottom half. Some color blocked items also have one color or print on the front of the garment and just black on the sides so that the eye is drawn to the print. 10. If you don't have any color blocked items and you want to accent your upper body, try wearing a brightly colored, form fitting top with a pair of black leggings or jeans. This will draw attention to your chest and waist. If you want to accentuate your lower half, opt for white, pastel, or brightly colored, form fitting pants or leggings with a black top. 3. Choose tops that are low cut or v neck. High necklines can make you appear boxy, so opt for items with lower necklines instead. V necks accentuate your curves best and draw the eye up towards your face. Try wearing deep v neck shirts, wrap shirts, and button down tops with the top three buttons undone. 11. To make the look more modest, try wearing a brightly colored camisole under a v-neck top. This will draw attention up and to your chest area, while ensuring that you don't have too much cleavage showing. 4. Pair a bodysuit or form-fitting top with an A-line skirt. This is a simple way to give the appearance of lots of sexy curves around your chest waist, and hips. Choose a top that is form-fitting and tuck it into an A-line skirt. Or, wear a bodysuit with an A-line skirt for an even smoother look around your waistline. 12. You could also try wearing a form-fitting top with ruching details around the waistline. This will give the appearance of an hourglass. Figure. 5. Wear a pencil skirt. If you want to add some classic vavavum, a pencil skirt is a great option. It hugs your waist, hips, and thighs to accentuate all of your curves. Go for a skirt that ends right at or just below your knees as this is the most flattering cut. 13. Pencil skirts should fit you snugly without showing your underwear or being too tight for you to sit. Choose a pencil skirt that's fitted, but still comfortable to move and sit down in. 6. Try a peplum top with leggings to accent your waist and hips. Peplum tops are fitted. Tops with skirts attached at the bottom. Choose one that fits you well and wear it with a pair of leggings, jeggings or skinny jeans to create the illusion of a tapered waist and full hips. 14. Tip, look for a peplum top with the skirt attached around your natural waist, which is the narrowest part of your waist just above your belly button. This will 
help to ensure that the top tapers in and flares out in all the right places. 7. Cinch your waist and accent curves with shape ui. Wearing shape ui under your clothing can help to make your natural curves stand out more. Try wearing a pair of high-waisted pantyhose with a control top when you wear a skirt or dress, a waist. Cinching corset under a form-fitting dress, or a pair of shape ui panties with jeans and a t-shirt or other casual looks. 15. If you want to create the appearance of a bigger backside, look for a pair of shape ui panties with padding in the butt area. You can purchase shape ui in the lingerie section of most department stores and online. Method 3. Posing to flaunt your curves. Download article. 1. Stand contraposto for photos or any time you want to look curvier. When you're being photographed, or just when you're having fun showing off, flaunt your curves by standing with a jutting hip. Instead of planting your weight evenly on both feet, try putting your weight on one foot. This will tilt your pelvis upward on the side of the weight-bearing foot. 16. Exaggerate the pose by jutting your hip out a little further. 2. Pose with your arms akimbo to make your waist seem smaller. Place a hand on your waist or hip. The space between your inner elbow and your waistline will draw attention to your hips and make your waist look smaller. 17. Try dropping one arm behind your jutting hip instead, for a sultry look. Another option is to raise an elbow and put your hand behind your head. 3. Tilt your head and angle your body to accentuate your curves. If you're standing and posing for a photo, try an exaggerated curvy pose. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, then drop one knee so your hip is at an angle. Place your hands below your hips, on your upper thighs. Then, hinge forward at the hips and lean forward slightly. Tilt your head to one side and jut out your elbows to ensure that your waist is visible. 18. Tip Try out different poses in front of a mirror to see what makes your body seem curviest. Then, ask a friend to photograph you in the pose that you like best. 4. Cross your legs to seem curvier while sitting or standing. Sitting or standing with your legs crossed will narrow the line of your knees and make your hips look curvier. Only do this if it is comfortable for you, and take breaks. Community Q&A Question How can I get an hourglass shape? WikiHow Staff Editor Staff Answer It can be hard to get an hourglass shape if you don't naturally have wide hips and a larger bust, but there are a few things you can do that might help. For instance, you can do upper body exercises along with exercises that build muscle in your hips and butt. Additionally, eat a healthy diet and do cardio to lose weight all over, including in your midsection. Doing exercises that tone your core, such as yoga or planks, might also help. If you still can't get the shape you want, try shape ui such as girdles or corsets, to enhance your natural curves. Not helpful for helpful 16. Question. What foods can I eat to get thick curves? WikiHow Staff Editor. Staff Answer. Eating healthy sources of fat, such as avocado, vegetable oils, fish, and nuts, as well as lean proteins like fish chicken breast, and legumes, can help you build muscle and create healthy curves. If you're working out a lot, make sure to get 
plenty of complex carbs to give you energy, such as high fiber fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Not helpful 3 helpful 12. Question. How can I get curves but keep a flat stomach? Wikihow staff editor. Staff answer. Do exercises that build muscle in your hips, butt, and thighs, such as lunges and squats, to build muscular curves. You can also tone your stomach and core with planks, leg lifts, and superman exercises. Eat a healthy diet and do cardio to lose fat all over, including around your midsection. Stay hydrated and avoid salty foods to reduce bloat and water retention. Not helpful 6 helpful 19. How to behave like a typical teenager. Download article. What does normal mean, anyway? Co-authored by William Gardner. PSYD. Last updated, the 21st of June, 2024 References. How to act normal. How to look normal. How to practice being normal. Tips. Warnings. When you're a teenager, there is not one way to be normal. It depends on your interests. Likes and dislikes. 1. All teens experience a range of different emotions and experiences. You may experience an intense desire to fit in with some group, to be accepted by your peers, of similar age, level, and interests. It's normal to feel like you're not normal. Enough. We all want to fit in somewhere, and fitting in doesn't mean you have to. Become a mindless drone with a relentless drive to conform. Embrace your inner weirdness and become the truest version of yourself. Method 1. How to act normal. Download article. 1. Spend time with people who are doing positive activities that you want to do. It's getting increasingly easy to spend too much time alone. While some solitude can be good, even loners have to come out to work, play or eat sometimes. To act normally and behave in a well-adjusted manner, not too different, it's important to spend time around other people, socializing and learning from them, so you can interact more directly and easily get involved. Just being around a variety of people in a coffee shop or at a restaurant, or at the movies, can help you learn about others and feel less isolated. This will make you more comfortable in your own skin, which in turn will make you more experienced at opening up and interacting. Find places where you're likely to run into like-minded people. Love. Comics. Quit buying them online and hit up your local comic shop. Love. To make art. Head to an art class, craft store or the museum. Take a class. In one of your interests and talk some with others learning the same. Topic or skill. Get in a choir or take music lessons. Some churches have. Music school and sport activities. Online friends exist in a grey area. They're real a lot of the time, but our interactions online are much different than our up-close, mano a mano interactions. Try to balance your time socializing online with at least as much, if not more, face-to-face -face interactions. 2. Avoid hanging out with people who act out in negative, wild, or crazy ways. Having a pessimistic, excitable, or silly friend is fine, but if being around them makes you uncomfortable, consider whether you should keep them as a friend. They may get themselves and you into unwanted difficulties and disgrace, so to speak. Avoid getting closer or hooked up with hateful, troubled, 
mean, destructive or violent persons. If you're good at something, offer up your help to those who may need it. When asked for, give your opinion or assistance. Don't go looking for trouble, let it come to you, and try to stay out of it. 3. Pay attention to the body language of others. When you're around people, keep an eye out for any clues they might give regarding how to behave normally in situations. Mirror the behavior of others, if it makes you comfortable. When you're in the library and everyone looks very studious, quiet, and absorbed in their work, it's probably not the best time to start cutting up and trying to make jokes. If everyone's dancing at a school dance, it might be normal to dance, but you don't have to. It's normal to feel both ways. If your neighbor at the lunch table keeps trying to make eye contact and smiles continuously at you, it's probably a good time for a conversation. If you feel open, try being friendly. Available communicating people often have open posture shoulders back, head up, not too relaxed. Relaxing but not acting open may be about, instead, acting tired, sleepy, angry, shy or grumpy. Arms and legs crossed may be a sign that they are satisfied to sit alone, not looking to be friendly. Learn to recognize and not act that way in your own interactions. If people are uncommunicative or closed off to you head down, arms crossed they probably don't want to talk. If you press the issue, it's possible that you might make them feel uncomfortable. Learn to recognize this and disengage from the conversation or interaction. Give them some space. 4. Be a good listener and wait for your turn to speak. When you're talking with someone, or with a group of people, try to balance listening and talking in equal measure. You don't have to be the one to contribute the most if you want to be noticed. It's just as important to be an active listener. Look at the person who's talking, not your head to show that you're listening, and really listen to what is being said. 2. Stay on topic. If everyone in a group is going around telling stories about their weekend, tell a story about your weekend, if you have one. It would be kind of strange to break the spirit of the moment, I had to watch my dad eat pickled herring. He eats weird stuff all the time. Hopefully, that's not really about your weekend. Don't hijack a conversation and take it elsewhere, or else, expect groans and protests. At your sense of humor, breaking the line of thought, unless it's time to change the topic. Listening doesn't mean looking across the room or thinking of what you're going to say until a moment of silence appears in a conversation for you to fill. However, listening means actively receiving and Responding to what the other is saying nicely, not just trying to think of what you're going to say next to top that bit. Accept the other's points as worthwhile, even if you've heard it already. Then without a yawn or cut down say, hey, yeah, excellent point forward slash that's true, but have you ever been to forward slash done this? Underscore 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 3 5 Set your personal boundaries A teenager is an individual who wants to be seen as Mature and experienced as one's peers Due to this, while you strive to become the best You, it can often be tempting to get pushed or pulled into things you might not be ready For, or even interested in Smoking Drinking, experimenting with the thrills of asking for dates, actually going on dates, when parents permit, holding hands, hugging, 
kissing. And deciding your approach to love, expressing your newfound state of being a teen. Balancing all these aspects is what normal teenagers confront in their everyday lives. While there's not just one set way to approach each of these aspects, what you should know is that it's your decision to stand for your values, beliefs and to accept your responsibility to understand the consequences of conduct and behavior in close relationships. It's your life. Make your choices, the right ones, to draw your best boundaries close to your heart. The closer you set your daily life boundaries to your present norms and accepted truths, where you're coming from, the sooner you can be well adjusted in your way. You will be able to avoid other way out freaky or boring stuff and be able to expand and extend your near boundaries. Launching out near your everyday unusual stuff. Keep it real. Keep it simple. Is easier than going off track or out into the far off unknown. Wanting to fit in is normal, and it's true that engaging in risky behaviors seems like a way to fit in and get people to respect you, but why would you compromise your personality and beliefs if you're not being? Yourself, it's not you they're respecting, or even noticing. Keep it cool, another good boundary to keep in mind is secrecy. It's okay to keep some things to yourself. It's almost too easy to put every event, success and failure, every frustration, anger and joy, up on Facebook as a status update. Does it all really need to be there for? Everyone to see and diss you. You give the answer. 6. Make your room an awesome sanctuary. For a teenager, there's nothing more critical than having a space all to your own. Make your room as unique as you are, filled with posters or candles, records or drawings. Fill it with yourself. Paint it whatever color you Want and fill it with things you like to look at. Take some time thinking about what would make the ideal room and get permission to make it that way. If you don't have your own room, find somewhere you feel comfortable that you can spend time in. Take a walk out into the yard or the woods. Find a great sitting park bench or find a table by a window that you love. At the library or spend time in a friend's basement den. Try to find somewhere quiet and available to you where you can find peace. Method 2. How to look normal Download article 1. Wear clean clothes that fit you properly. There's no normal type of clothes to wear. Styles change all the time and it can be very difficult to keep up. Wear whatever is comfortable and affordable for you, but make sure the clothes are as flattering as possible. Skinny jeans and crop tops may be in, but just because they're popular or normal doesn't mean they're necessarily right for your body type. Wear clothes that will flatter your figure and feel comfortable, not something that will leave you feeling unconfident or exposed. Don't be a wannabe. Don't be afraid to have your own style. If you think throwback, basketball jerseys and athletic shorts are cool, you're in good company. If you think rugby shirts and khaki pants look good, you're in safe waters. The important normal constant is that whatever you wear is clean and form-fitting. 4. 2. Learn a little about contemporary fashion. It's a good idea to pay attention to what other kids are wearing, not because you must conform and wear the same thing, but so you can at least have some concept of the average dress wear. Then, if you choose to go in another direction, 
you'll be aware of what you're doing and not end up wearing plaid. Grandpa pants and golfing shoes to school because you think it's normal. You don't have to go to expensive stores to dress normally. Box stores. Like Target, Walmart, and other outlets usually have sale items that are affordable and current. At thrift stores, try to find the newest cleanest clothes available that are in your size. In middle school especially, it can seem that all anyone cares about is getting the next must-have clothes trend which are usually expensive and will be forgotten in another six months anyway. 3. Groom yourself. If you want to look normal, you don't have to do anything fancy with your grooming, however, a little effort will go a long way. Keep yourself clean and well. Kept and your confidence will be higher knowing that you're looking your best. 5. Brush your teeth and floss. Your smile will be friendly and picture ready. With proper dental care. Having healthy teeth can up your confidence. Significantly. Take a shower at least every other day, and every day that you exercise. Wash your hair with shampoo and clean your body with soap. Keep your nails neatly clipped and clean. Normal girls and boys also. Enjoy painting fingernails sometimes, which is perfectly appropriate if you want. Try to keep the paint fresh, and remove it when it starts. Becoming chipped. Talk to your parents about when it's appropriate to start wearing make. Up, if you want to. Use a small amount of natural coloring to highlight. Your beauty, if you choose to. 4. Style your hair and keep it clean. Your hair is just as important as any other part of. Your body, it takes some work to keep it healthy and clean. Your hair should be washed. At least every two to three days to keep it strong and lustrous. Both boys and girls should comb their hair regularly to keep it untangled and healthy. If you use products, don't go overboard. A little mousse, gel, or hairspray can go a long way. You don't want a crispy frosted flat top like it's 1996. Aim for a natural look that highlights your normal hair. Experiment with new haircuts going for a buzz or growing it out like a rocker if you want. Being a teenager is the one time you can experiment with your personality and your identity. 5. Take care of your body. When you're young, it seems like you're invincible. You can eat like there's no tomorrow, stay out all night and go through your day like it's nothing, and... Recover from injuries super fast. Unfortunately, it won't last. It's important to build the good habits that will ensure your health throughout your teenage years and further on. 2. Pay attention to what and how much you're eating. Most teenagers have crazy high metabolisms due to growth spurts, meaning that you'll be Able to eat lots and lots of high-calorie food without gaining extra weight, especially if you're physically active and play sports. When that high metabolism ends, though, or you stop playing sports, it's possible to suddenly gain lots of weight. It's important to develop a love of physical activity early on, so you can build the good habits that will keep you healthy in the long run. 6. You don't have to be one of the jocks to enjoy exercise. If you love basketball but don't want to play on the team, go to the park and shoot. Hoops. Who cares if you miss more than you make? If you don't love playing any competitive sports, try out hiking around the woods and getting into nature or see if you don't enjoy rock climbing or other solo adventures. Method 3. 
How to practice being normal. Download article. 1. Find hobbies that help you relax. As a teen, you should have hobbies and interests to keep you occupied and engaged. School probably won't cut it. Try to find extracurricular hobbies that will let you blow off some steam and find enjoyment. Some kind of extracurricular activity can be a great way of meeting other kids your age and socializing without having to meet people yourself. Many teenagers take sports very seriously. Find out what team sports are offered at your school and consider trying out for the team. If you don't like any of the sports offered, tennis lessons, golf lessons, or other individualized sports might be more appropriate for you. Heck, check out learning how to fence. Check out clubs at school. Sports aren't even close to being the only way to socialize at school. Foreign language clubs, chess clubs, art clubs, ecology clubs, and all sorts of organizations are available to students for fun and learning outside of school. If you don't like any of the clubs at your school, check out after-school programs at the YMCA or other youth center in your town, or check out a youth group at a church. Try playing music. Whether in marching band, concert band or by starting your own garage band, music can be a great outlet for teenagers. Studies show that teens who study music learn more efficiently and have a great amount of fun and camaraderie playing. 2. Broaden your world view. As you get older, it's important to learn as much as you can about other people and learn to exercise your empathy skills. A child thinks only of themselves, and an adult is able to think more selflessly, but a teenager is somewhere in the middle. It can be tough. Mission trips and exchange programs can be excellent and effective. Experiences for many teenagers if such opportunities are available. Likewise, Getting a part-time job and learning to work for your keep is an important growing up step that you can learn in the summertime, or on the weekends after school. Read as much as you can, about as much diverse topics that you can. Travel from the comfort of a chair by checking out novels, travelogues, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever you like reading. Read some things that are Challenging and some things that are easy. Read all the time. Read. Everything. 3. Try out different ways to express yourself. Being a teen is a time of experimenting. Trying on new identities until you learn which one fits you the best. In a given year, you might switch back and forth between thinking you want to be a doctor and loving your position on the soccer team to wanting nothing but to write poetry and hang out with painters and paint your fingernails black. That's okay. That's normal. Try out being an art kid. Take some art classes and learn the fundamentals to see you if you'd like to spend your days in the studio. Creating strange masterpieces. Try out the exciting world of mystery. Lots of teenagers take solace in the dark clothes and powerful vibes of a mysterious person. While it might seem weird it's pretty normal. Embrace your inner athlete. Jocks don't have to be the villains from high school drama movies. Be a well-adjusted athlete who takes sporting seriously. Make it your thing. 4. Find like-minded people. Find a community of people you like and people who are like you and get to know them well. Hang out in school and outside of school. Support each 
other and lift each other up. Emphasize forging a few strong relationships over lots of meaningless ones. It's not worth having 800 Facebook friends if you can't talk to any of them in real life. Alternatively, it's also a good idea to meet lots of people who you don't necessarily have a lot in common with. If you're a sporty athlete, hang out with some of the art kids every now and then to see what you have in common. Try to make all sorts of different friends. 5. Make room in your life for school and work. Having fun is important, but taking your responsibilities seriously is just as important a part of growing up. Save enough time in your busy teenage schedule to complete your schoolwork and work as hard as possible at doing well. Even if you think you're sure what you want to do in life, and that plan doesn't involve algebra trigonometry, give it your best shot. You never know how you might regret blowing off that welding class, or zoning out during sewing down the road. Make sure you take excellent notes. Notes force you to pay attention. Improve your memory and provide you with a helpful study guide. Do your homework. Don't slack off on it, because believe it or not, it really does help you learn. Pay attention in class and ask questions to stay engaged. Respect your teachers and try to make the best of it. 6. Give some thought to the future. Where do you want to be in 10 years? In 20. What do you want to do with your life? Tough questions for anybody. And uncomfortable questions for most, especially teenagers. But it's something you're going to have to struggle with. The more you struggle with it, the better. You'll prepare yourself for your teenage years, and the more normal you'll be. It's something everyone struggles with before transitioning into adulthood. If you want to go to college, start researching affordable places. You might attend that seem to be full of people like you, or places that offer the kinds of specialties you'd like to study. Many teens who struggle to make friends or fit in during high school really come into stride during college. It's also normal and perfectly fine to have no idea what you want to do with your life. Don't worry about it too much. That's perfectly normal. When people ask, tell them that you're just trying to get through your teens first. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Learn when to stop and say no. For example say no when someone asks you to drink. Or try a cigar forward slash cigarette. Be an individual by not copying or following fads, actors, singers, athletes and their styles. Have your own opinions but don't exclude everyone else's. Think outside the box. But most importantly, develop many, small, good goals to grow and change for the better. In the words of Steve Jobs, the people who think they can change the world are the ones who do, not those who think they must follow the latest ideas, fads, and styles. Don't feel pressured to conform to only one style. Wear what you want in spite of peer pressure. Listen to music you like. Be yourself. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Don't let others let you down. Never let negative comments make you change who you are. Everyone is still figuring themselves out in their teens, and it's okay to be different. How to make $100 in a week. Teens. Download article. Methods. 1. Getting cash fast. 
2. Teaching people what you know. 3. Getting a regular job. Plus show two more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by WikiHow staff. Last updated, the 8th of February, 2024 references. Many Americans find themselves needing cash for various expenditures in their teenage years. Most part-time jobs, however, will either hire applicants over 18 years old, or simply will not hire teens, making earning quick money difficult. There are still ways. However, teens can make money. With the proper planning, you can be well on your Way to $100 in a week. Method 1. Getting cash fast. Download article. 1. Babysit your way to the $100. Many families hire teenagers to babysit their young children. If you are friendly and have a good rapport with young families in your neighborhood, ask them if they need a babysitter. Getting hired by family and neighborhood friends is optimal because it means quick cash and a safe contact you already know. Print out some flyers with tearaway tabs that have your contact info on them, then hang them up at your local elementary school. Start with people you already know, such as friends and family members. Tell them to help spread the word of what an awesome Babysitter you are. 2. Recycle junk for cash. Prior generations used to search for cans and bottles to recycle. Just so they had some extra cash. There are a variety of things you can recycle if you're resourceful enough. 1. Gather recyclable items, such as soda cans and plastic water bottles. Once you have enough to fill a trash bag, take them to a recycling center. You won't make a ton off of this, so it's best to sell your recyclables in large batches. This way, you'll save a couple of trips. Ask your family and friends for their soda cans and water bottles too. This will give you more to sell back to your local recycling center. 3. Try your hand at dog walking or pet sitting. Many people worry about their pets like human members of the family. Soothe concerns about beloved pets by taking care of them, walking them, and showing the pets love. 2. Make flyers for your pet sitting service with tearaway tabs that contain your phone number or email. Post these in libraries or coffee shops. Earn a good reputation with dog owners by spending time at dog parks. Interact with the owners and their dogs, but also respect their space. 4. Work outside for money, exercise, and a little fresh air. People often hire teens. Because they want to help out the neighborhood kids, and it is a much cheaper alternative to professional landscaping companies. If you aren't afraid of getting your hands dirty, try a few of the following suggestions. Offer lawn care services, such as mowing, weeding or raking. Bring your tools with you, or offer a discount for borrowing your client's tools. Cater to the season. If it snows in your area, consider adding snow. Shoveling to your services. If your area has a lot of pollen, offer car. Washing. Look for damaged fences and offer to repair them. Fences often need. Repainting or straightening. Method. 2. Teaching people what you know. Download article. 1. Become a tutor. Find your expertise. Develop a way to get your point across, and find your potential clients. It may seem outrageous, but tutoring in an extreme case has 
pooled in $1,250 an hour. 3. Typical tutoring services, however, start somewhere between $10 and $15 an hour. 4. Start with the kids in your class, then use flyers or word of mouth to advertise your services at your school or local library. Depending on what you're comfortable with, you can do private one-on-one -one sessions or small group sessions. Libraries often have special areas or rooms that you can check out for tutoring and group studying. Some schools also have tutoring centers that you can use. 2. Try quick internet jobs. Many people are too busy to do the simplest things like get groceries, pick up dry cleaning, or transcribe a page of text. Sign on to a site like TaskRabbit, Fiverr, or Zali and look for the jobs you can complete in your area. Some sites will pay you to take and complete surveys, but be wary of scams if you try those. Research them online. 3. Use computer and electronic abilities. Though it is hard to comprehend, people born before the Internet age don't find computers as easy as you do. Here are a few creative ways to exploit your knowledge. Offer to connect a TV to a stereo or hook up an equalizer. Train people how to set up their wireless devices and accounts, such as Roku, Apple TV, or Netflix. 5. Teach the elderly all about computers, including hardware basics, internet security, and common terms, such as cookies and phishing. 6. Method. 3. Getting a regular job. Download article. 1. Look for day labor. Many local businesses hire day laborers for basic tasks. Though, being under 18 discounts you from many jobs, you may be able to find work as a sign. Holder or greeter. Peruse the classifieds for listings. If you remember noticing a business that employed a young-looking teen to hold a sign or something like that, call them and ask if they have any work. Be aware that these jobs may not be permanent, and often have random schedules. Not all jobs require you to be 18. Some jobs will hire younger teens, depending on the state's laws. 2. Drive for your money. If you have a car, Signing up to be a driver is a perfect way to make money. Become a driver for Uber or LYFT and work when you find the time. 7. Alternatively, offer your services at school. Your classmates will always need rides to events, school, home, and extracurricular activities. If you're driving your classmates, keep your prices reasonable. After all, they are probably in the same situation as you and don't have a lot of cash. 3. Get a part-time job. If you're having trouble finding people to pay you for your services, get a part-time job. Go to the mall and put in applications. Fast food locations are always hiring. Both job types are perfect part-time jobs for teens. Retail is a great way to get started because of the flexible scheduling. Many stores and cafes hire students and understand that they need to work around classes. 4. Find a job that earns tips. Paid jobs often correspond to paychecks that take a few weeks before you see them in your bank account. However, you can get around the paycheck problem with a job that earns cash tips. This way, you have a check on the way, as well as cash in your pocket immediately. If you have your license and know the area well, delivering pizzas, 
quickly to hungry customers is guaranteed to earn you some good. Tips 8. Restaurant waiters, servers, buzzboys, and hosts can earn a lot via tips. Be a good server, pay attention to your customers, and they'll likely tip you 20% of the bill. 9. Work as a golf caddy. You can make some great tips on the links. Especially if you're helping someone who has a good round. 10. Method. 4. Selling your unused items. Download article. 1. Look for clothes you don't wear anymore. Many teens have clothes lying around that no longer fit or are a style they wouldn't wear. Put together a box you think you could sell and approach your parents. Let them go through your box and tell you which items are okay to sell and which you need to return to your closet. Sell your clothes online or at a yard sale. If you're too young to open up an account on your preferred website, ask your parents if they can sell for you. 2. Purge the childish items you no longer play with or feel connected to. Just like clothing, teens outgrow their hobbies. Look around for items you haven't used in years. Like child-friendly telescopes, toys, or dolls. You should be able to sell a few of the items. For a decent amount of money, or a ton, especially if your room is cluttered. This doesn't mean that you have to get rid of everything. If your childhood bear is still special to you, keep him. Even if he spends his days on the shelf. 3. Sell your old video games. Selling your games can be done at a store or online. Try not to wait until the game system you're selling is obsolete, because it won't have nearly the same value. The right video game, however, could net you far more than $100 if you sell it at the right time. 11. On the other hand, some vintage games can fetch a lot of money. Don't. Make assumptions and do your research online first. You might have some valuable treasures. 4. Organize a yard forward slash garage sale. Once you have gotten a few boxes of clothes and toys, together it's time to sell them. You may have seen signs for yard sales in your neighborhood before. Put up a few signs with large, easy-to-read letters, break out the tables, and get enough change to for when you start to sell. Get your family or multiple families involved in a community garage sale. This will get you more attention and customers. Method 5. Discovering jobs, opportunities, and ambition. Download article. 1. Ask your immediate and extended family. Family members are often happy to hire their relative to help with chores around the house. Tell them what you specialize in, but be open to doing whatever they need. If they sympathize with your cause, they are more likely to hire you. Elderly people often need help. Ask your grandparents if they need Anything carried or moved? Are your siblings messy? Offer to clean up their rooms for a nominal fee. Look for opportunities when your parents are overburdened. 4. Example, if your mom wishes that she had less housework so that she could enjoy a nice day out, offer to help out for some cash. 2. Advertise around the neighborhood or local community for anything from lawn care to babysitting. This is a way to make sure that only trusted people in your neighborhood are contracting your services, preferably individuals you already know. Put up flyers on your local community center's bulletin board. Include 
tear off tabs with your phone number so that people can take your contact info with them. 3. Advertise online. The easiest way to get the word out about your services is on internet. Classifieds. Make sure you are not putting any specific information about your identity or residence in the ad. Only reply to legitimate sounding solicitations. There are a variety of ways to advertise locally online. Post an ad on Craigslist. Find your local city, look for the type of jobs needing help, and post an ad offering the same type of help. Alternatively, reply to the odds and ends jobs. Advertise on Facebook. This is also a great way to reach out to the extended family and friend list willing to support your endeavors. 12. Create a quick website and market your services. There are a variety of creative ways to use a very simple website to make money. 13. 4. Try traditional print or newspaper classifieds. Though these are less utilized than their internet counterparts, many people still peruse them for goods and services. 14. You're more likely to reach an older audience who hasn't quite caught on to everything being online, so, tailor your ads to jobs they'd most likely want. For example, an elderly person might need help with purchasing groceries or yard work, rather than babysitting. 5. Decide why you need the money. When asking family, friends, and neighbors to hire you for jobs, remember that it is more of a favor to you than them. Your reason for wanting to earn $100 fast can either make or break this for you. Without good reasoning, they may be less likely to employ you for odds and ends. Good reason you'd like to better yourself by taking music courses at the local community college. Good reason there is a charity 5k you'd like to sign you and your sibling up for, but you don't have the registration funds. Bad reason buying a new smartphone because you broke your Current one might display a lack of responsibility. Bad reason paying back someone at school for something you didn't need in the first place. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Tips from our readers. You can make money fast by selling snacks at school. Just buy it cheap and charge. A little more than what you paid. Selling stuff at school is usually against the rules, so make sure you understand the risks. Candy, chips, gum, tackies, and cookies are top sellers. If you see an ad online that promises you a lot of money fast, don't believe it. There are lots of online scams that look like jobs you can do from home. If it Sounds too good to be true, it is.